take a clipping of this torch ginger. This is a really soft pink color um, and transplant it to the other side of the farm. Largest asparagus you'll ever find. next step in our project was to take off all these roofing panels. They're just the zinc panels held on by these gnarly nails with little roofs on themselves. But they're twisted if you could see that in the light. So they really stick in there. We're using a crowbar. I was able to pull them all out. And now we can take all the 2x4s. I think there's probably at least 40 of them here. So, And then we'll get to clearing the next step. Hurricane Britain! So this is super exciting. We weren't expecting to get the walls taken down today, but Britain just kind of pushed. They were so wobbly after, after the roof had taken, gone off. And so now all of the walls have uh, collapsed. That side collapsed onto itself when this one fell. There's a lot of nails and things on the ground, so we have to be kind of careful as we pick it up. But, um, so that'll be the, the afternoon project, but look at this view! lumber that is in good shape down below where it's not visible and then we've left some lumber up here because we are going to build a structure up and here. Uh, the pad is all that's all that's left so we have a, a lot still to go but this is a huge accomplishment. Um, there was a lot more involved in that shed than we thought. It had a ton of nails, a ton of lumber, um, it was double-sided. There's no 
now we understand why it didn't blow away after the hurricane. That thing was built like Fort Knox. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so great job to Britain. He took the lead on this, but we both uh, worked pretty hard on getting this all cleared out. What are we doing, Britain? Throwing some garbage. This is the uh, local public works. You can take oil and trash and construction materials here sometimes. If it rains, it gets too muddy and they're not open on weekends, but here we go. Swinging along here at Domes Beach in Rinko. So here we are in this old finca, and here is the uh, termite issue. Pulled this wood trim off, and there are termites all over. What they do is they find any wood that is not treated. So any wood that is treated, they won't touch. So all of the house is built with treated lumber. They don't ever get into it. But this wood trim that we bought is a eucalyptus wood. It's really pretty, but they didn't treat it. What we found out is if you use poison, um, and soak it really good with the wood, they don't touch it again. But we haven't gotten to this piece yet. So I noticed the termite trail, pulled it off. Yep, they're all in there. We'll soak this with some uh, termite poison and they'll never touch it again. Okay, estamos haciendo huevos endiablados. Y después tenemos la yema, mostaza, eh, mayonesa, y luego ahora vamos a echar un poco de vinagre. <laughs> Un driving around and we saw this another abandoned property so come on up check out this view check out this window in the house. <laughs> Ooh, Arch. Arch. Another gorgeous bouquet. Sixty pink. Here we are on our shed project, as you've seen in previous videos. Um, it's gone. We power washed the concrete and now we're going to do something we haven't ever done which is use concrete stain. We're going to stain this one white and then use a stencil over top. So we got the concrete stain. I've got the roller to apply it with and hopefully it comes out smooth and even. But we've never done it before so we'll see how it goes. So here we are today, uh, we're going to be making a lattice for pitaya or dragon fruit. Uh, we've got dragon fruit, it's like a cactus, we've gotten it to grow, but what we've read is that if you really want it to flower, you have to build an apparatus or a lattice for it so it can hang and then it'll flower and you can pollinate it and get fruit. So we've got some wood here. This is leftover stuff from the old house that just there's no end to which is great. Um, we're going to make a stake and a cross on top, and then we're going to plant the pitaya at the bottom. So 
we're on attempt number two because the first one, just the soil has so many rocks that this stake wasn't going to go in it. So instead we planted our uh, a tuna cactus and in the hole, so that'll work. And then we're going to try here, there's a little bit better soil. So attempt number two. So we were hitting this two by four so many times with the sledgehammer that it just split the top, which happens. When we were trying to drive it into those rocks, it took so much force it just split this old wood. But that's okay. So now we've got the post good and stuck in the ground and we've got this uh, pitaya plant wired to it so it should be able to grow like an umbrella and drop beautiful flowers and have wonderful fruit. That's the plan anyway. Okay, so today we're out here taking a few pictures. It's December. You always have to take advantage of the beautiful weather in the winter in Puerto Rico. It's perfect. The sun is just right. The, the atmosphere is perfectly clear. We're in a little seaside here and there's water. Little bank of uh, palm trees over here by Olaha. A lot of our fruit that we planted when we first moved here, little fruit trees uh, seven years ago or so, are finally mature enough to give us fruit. We, got our, we had our first avocados, we've had some um, amazing fruits, but this one was new to us. Um, we've never tried it, in fact, I've never tried it yet. This is called uh, French Peanut, and it just grew in the tree like this. It was really hard shelled, and we left it on the counter, and it started to kind of split. As you can see, it's really hard um, shell. So, I'm going to try this. This is the, the fruit. It's like a nut from what I understand. And let's see how it goes. Hmm. The shell, the outside is really fibrous, probably not edible. But the inside is pretty good. It's almost got like a cauliflower type of taste or like an un undercooked uh, macadamia nut maybe. So I wonder if you could roast these or something. Pretty good. 